King Sopuza II was the paramount chief and later King of Swaziland for 82 years and 254 days, the longest verifiable reign of any monarch in recorded history. He was born in Gwenyama Sopuza on the 22nd of July 1899 at Zombuzi Royal Residence. He was the son of Inkozi Kartila Mawa and King Warne V. When he was only four months old, his father died suddenly while dancing in a kwala. So Buza was chosen king soon after that, and his grandmother, Labotsi Benim Dhuli, and his uncle, Prince Maluongke, led the Swazi nation until his maturity in 1921. So Buza led Swaziland through independence until his death in 1982. He was succeeded by King Mzwati III, his young son, with Inkozi Kartin Fombi Fwada, who was crowned in 1986. Ingonyama Sobuza was educated at the Swazi National School, Zombuzi, and at the Lovedale Institution, in the Eastern Cape, in South Africa, before assuming the Swazi throne as paramount chief at the age of 22, when power was formally transferred to him on the 22nd of December 1921. King Sobuza presided over Swaziland's independence from the United Kingdom in 1968, after which the British government recognized him as King of Swaziland. Early in his reign, he sought to address the problem of land partition and deprivation instituted by the British authorities in 1907. He did so by first leading a delegation to London to meet with King George V and petition him to restore the lands to the Swazi people. He again took his case on the land issue, in 1929, to the Privy Council. He was defeated by the terms of the Foreign Jurisdictions Act, which effectively placed the actions of British administrations in protectorates beyond the reach of the British courts. So Booz's role, during this colonial period, was for the most part ceremonial but he still had major influence as a traditional head of the Swazi nation. In 1953, he attended the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in London. In the early 1960s, Sobuza played a major role in events that led to independence for his country in 1968. He opposed the post-colonial Westminster Constitution proposed by the British government in which he was assigned the role of constitutional monarch. As a consequence, acting through his advisory council, he formed the Mbokodvo National Movement, a political party which contested and won all seats in the 1967 pre-independence elections. He became recognized by the British as King of Swaziland in 1967, when Swaziland was given direct rule. Independence was achieved on the 6th of September 1968. Following this, Sobuza skillfully blended appeal to tribal custom with a capacity to manage economic and social change for his kingdom. On the 12th of April 1973, the king repealed the constitution and dissolved parliament, henceforth exercising power as an absolute monarch. In 1978, a new constitution was promulgated, which provided for an elaborate reversion to a tribal mode of rule, involving an electoral college of 80 members, chosen by 40 local councils, known as Tinkundla, dominated by tribal elements. The Swazi economy prospered under Sobuza's leadership. Swaziland is rich in natural resources, and much of the land and mineral wealth, originally owned by non-Swazi interests, was brought under indigenous control during Sobuza's reign. King Sobuza celebrated his Diamond Jubilee in 1981. At this time, he had successfully restored and indeed strengthened the monarch's role as the chief arbiter of decision-making in his kingdom. In the early 1980s, King Sobuza attempted to acquire control over Kigwane, a Bantu stand set up by the South African government in an attempt to reunite all Swazi people, separated by the colonial boundary. He died on the 21st of August 1982, at Imbo State House, at the age of 83. 
So Boozer's official incumbency of 82 years and 254 days is the longest precisely dated monarchical reign on record and the world's longest documented reign of any sovereign since antiquity. Known as the honorific bull of Swazi, by virtue of his numerous progeny, King Sobuza continued the tribal practice of maintaining many consorts. According to the Swaziland National Trust Commission, King Sobuza II married 70 wives, who gave him 210 children, between 1920 and 1970. About 180 children survived infancy, and 97 sons and daughters were reported living as of 2000. At his death, he had more than 1,000 grandchildren. So Buza died in 1982, having appointed Prince Sazi Sadlamini to serve as authorized person, advising a regent. Selection of a successor was confirmed only after King Sobuza's death, a regent being necessary, if the heir remained underage at that time. By tradition, the regent would be one of the queen's consort, who had borne the late king a son. The first regent was Queen Zili Wei, but after a power struggle, Sazisa deposed her, and she was replaced by Queen Fombi Fwala. Queen Fombi Fwala reigned on behalf of her young son by King Sopuza, Prince Marco Zitivitlamini, who was designated as Crown Prince. He was crowned King Mzwati III in 1986. One of Sobuza's sons-in-law was Goodwill Zweltini, King of the Zulus of South Africa, who married the Swazi King's daughter, Princess Man Fombi, born at Setki, in 1956, and betrothed in 1973, at Nongoma, in June 1977. Another in law is Zinani Mandela, the daughter of former South African President, Nelson Mandela, who belonged to a cadet branch of the Timbu dynasty, which reigns as paramount chiefs in the Transkei. She wedded King Sobuza's son, Prince Tuobumu Zitlamini, who, although an older half-brother of Mzwati and Man Fombi, did not inherit the Swazi throne, instead launching, with his wife, an enterprise in the United States. Swazis who lived during the reign of King Sobuza, remember him with nostalgia expressly indicating that he was the very embodiment of the Swazi nation, the people and the land. He is really loved by the people, and they describe him as wise and progressive king. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe.